hello hello welcome to my second <laughs> pregnancy vlog um we are currently five weeks and four days pregnant i think our little embryo is the size of a sesame seed this week which is exciting <laughs> i am um, we had a mcdonald's the other day to celebrate <laughs> I am eating very healthy, um, but that was when Chris came back from a work trip and he was like, I really fancy a McDonald's, should we get one? I was like, yeah, okay, sure, why not? I have I've eaten really healthy apart from apart from this. Um, and I ordered a quarter pounder and it came in a sesame seed bun and I was just like, oh my God, this is how big it is right now, it's so tiny. Um, so yeah, it's, it's very exciting. Um, but obviously we're just still taking things day by day because we're still very, very early. And yeah, just sort of plodding along. I don't really have a lot to share with you as far as symptoms go. I am still fairly symptomless, um, which I am happy about in the whole morning sickness, morning sickness, in the whole sickness area, but a little bit anxious about it and everything else. Cause yeah, I don't know, you just kind of sat here like, are you in there? <laughs> Like, is there anything going on? Am I actually pregnant? I've got all these um, pregnancy tests on the side because um, my ovulation kit came with like these, like 20 of these little dipsticks and I've bought two of those packs. So I've got 40 pregnancy tests. So I have pretty much been taking one every day, just like dipping every morning. And they've been getting darker and darker, which is a great sign. They're like maxed out now, pretty much. Um, I took one the other day and it was the our test line was darker than the control line. So I was like, yes, <laughs> that's a lot of HCG in there. Um, and we did one of the clear blue digital ones of the week indicator. Um, and it showed two to three weeks last week, which was very exciting because last time we only made it to one to two weeks. Um, so that was, that felt like kind of a big moment. And then we took another one a week later and it said three plus weeks. So that's obviously increasing. Things are increasing as far as the at-home pregnancy tests go. So that's a good sign. Um, but yeah, as far as like symptoms go, the only thing I've got is like sore boobs and they do feel quite sore now. Like my nipples are just so sensitive. Um, like I've been living in my Wookaware bralette because a normal bra is just, <laughs> it's very painful. Um, but apart from that, that's pretty much it. Um, I do feel like I'm overheating a lot quicker. It's very hot in the UK at the moment. It was like 29 degrees yesterday. It's 26 degrees at 10 a.m. this morning. Normally, I'm what we call nesh, which is like when you're just always cold. What do you call it in your part of the world? Ours is nesh, like a cold fish. <laughs> so I'm always cold, even on hot days, I'm a little bit chilly, but I have just been overheating so quickly. I think it's because your body temperature does rise slightly when you're pregnant. Um, but yeah, I've been getting very, very hot and I'm just cowering inside today because it's too much. <laughs> I've been for a blood test today because um, last week, like late last week, I started to get um, some sharp pains on my right hand side, quite low down. And they started off as like dull aches, but very, very localized. It kind of felt like someone was pressing their thumb really hard into like my pelvic bone um <clears throat> so i didn't really think much of it because they were it was like a like a pulsating pain i guess and as far as i'm aware like cramps and stuff like low level cramping down there is um fairly normal you know it's growing pains and stuff but i know that if the pain is um like a localized on one side yeah um, it can be a sign that something's not quite right um and yeah the doctor basically last time told me to watch out for that kind of stuff because it can be a symptom of an ectopic pregnancy but because mine were kind of like fairly dull like they were enough for me to notice them like i sat there and i like wince a little bit when when the pain came and then went away um i didn't really think much of it but i did a quick little look on the nhs website just to make sure, because I it, I thought that as far as ectopic pregnancies go, it would it, it would involve you know bleeding, which touch wood I haven't had any so far, and excruciating pain where you were like crippled with pain, like you know bent over in pain. But according to the NHS website, it can it can come with or without bleeding, and the pain can um, 
start off as like a dull mild ache all the way up to excruciating pain where you think that you need to go to the to a and e so then it made me a little bit concerned um <clears throat> i guess uh, you know it, it's scary enough as it is isn't it and then you start to read something like that and i know that the nhs are probably just trying to cover all bases but it was um yeah it was it was a little bit concerning so i phoned the gp and she was great um she said i'm not overly concerned at the moment um but it is something that i'd like to do some tests for so she really helped to reassure me so we're basically doing some tests this week. I've done my first one today and these are HCG tests. So these um, will show the level of HCG, which is the pregnancy hormone, which is what is um, coming up on your at home we stick pregnancy tests, right? But you, this, the blood test will be able to give you a specific number as to the levels of it in your system at the moment. And they can see whether that sort of matches up to where you should be, obviously things vary, but where you should be at this stage in the pregnancy. And then I'm going to have another one on Wednesday and they will be able to see the difference between the two tests because things should roughly be doubling every 48 to 72 hours. Um, so they'll be able to see if my levels are going up at the, the right level that they're supposed to be. If they're sort of staying the same, that could indicate a problem. If they're dropping, that can indicate a problem. Um, if they're very, very slowly rising, that can also indicate a problem. And they might want to do some more tests. So... Yeah, I think we will pretty much find out the results from this one tomorrow to see whether it's in the right sort of ballpark. And then hopefully by Thursday, Friday, we'll have the results of both and we'll be able to see if things are moving in the right direction. But she did suggest that if we could afford it, it would be a really good idea to, to book in for a private scan. She said, I don't want to send you off for one with us just yet um, because we haven't, I, like, I'm not too concerned at the minute, which was... A really good thing to hear which was like I know they're expensive but if you can book in for one try and book in for one as early as you can um this one I think is around 80 but you do get a free rescan seven to ten days later so technically it's 40 pounds for the scan and you get two <laughs> still a little bit painful but there are people out there going through IVF and spending thousands and thousands of pounds for their little miracle we thought for our peace of mind and my safety because that's the thing with ectopic pregnancies is like it hadn't even crossed my mind to be perfectly honest we were just kind of thinking of you know we're either gonna it's either gonna stick or it's not we're gonna miscarry again or we're gonna be lucky and it's gonna stick around i hadn't even thought about a, an ectopic pregnancy until I started having these pains. And that is really serious. Um, you know, miscarriages are hard enough at the best of times, but an ectopic pregnancy comes with a whole other load of um, very serious implications. For those of you who don't know, an ectopic pregnancy is, is where the embryo embeds um, somewhere outside of the uterus, most are often in the fallopian tube, not always in there, but most often in the fallopian tube. And obviously the fallopian tube isn't designed to grow a baby, so at some point the tube will rupture um, and it can be life-threatening for the person carrying the baby. So they are the implications of this. Um, so yeah, we booked in for this scam and we figured if it is the worst, it gives us about a five-day head start um, so we can hopefully get me looked after and things will be as safe as they can be because people can end up having full hysterectomies you can end up losing a fallopian tube it's really dangerous it's really scary so we're not going to see much on tomorrow's scan at all but hopefully at the very least we will just be able to rule out an ectopic pregnancy and at least see that something is there so yeah there's a lot going on this week and hopefully hopefully um this time next week i'll be able to sit down and um show you some little scan pictures of our little sesame seed well i think it will be a lentil next week <laughs> um will show you some pictures of our little sesame seed growing in the right place um and growing well so yeah we're just trying to stay positive and take each day as it comes again just crossing everything that things are that things are going right it's uh yeah, it's a really, it's a really scary time, this, this sort of first three months. And um, when you don't, 
you don't get a phone call from the midwife until between eight to ten weeks. It's there's a lot you've got a lot of questions, there's a lot of things going on up there. Um and yeah, we just feel very, very grateful and very lucky that we've been able to pull the money together to do these scans and get that reassurance. Obviously, if the blood tests come back really dodgy <laughs> and we weren't able to do that scan, um, the doctor would have been able to organise that for us. So, you know, always worth phoning the doctor if you're concerned about anything. And I was like, just uh, apologising to the lady on the phone. I was like, I'm so sorry, I don't want to cause a fuss. And she was like, no, you've done the right thing and um, because this can be really, really dangerous and we just want to make 100% sure that you are safe. But yeah, for now, I'm going to go and have a little ice pop. <laughs> Try not to melt. Toby is currently melting over there, bless him. We've got his little paddling pool out for him. Um, and we've set up the hot tub on cold, because obviously you're not supposed to go in hot tubs, um, because it's really important that you stay cool and don't overheat, especially during the first trimester. Um, so we've set the hot tub up on a cold setting, so it's like having our own little swimming pool. So if I do get really, really hot, I can just jump in there and cool off, um, which will be really nice to be able to do. So, yeah, I'm excited. I am excited. We are excited. It's just there's a lot going on this week. I'm going to be poked and prodded from all angles, but I don't care as long as we get some if we get some reassurance, it will all be worth it. So I oh, feel I'm getting emotional. There's a sign for you. There's another symptom, very emotional. Cried at an advert the other day. Can't even remember what it was for, but it was full on tears. So <laughs> hopefully we'll see you next week um, with some piggies, but yeah, we plow on. <laughs> Welcome to the next pregnancy instalment. I'm going to do week six and seven in one because I was actually away last week on a press trip, which was difficult. <laughs> um, so I didn't get a chance to film it. As far as all the fun stuff goes, we had a five week scan uh, just to basically see if everything was where it needed to be. And it is. There's no ectopic pregnancy. We have a little embryo growing exactly where it should be. <laughs> if you can see, uh, there, that's our little embryo at five weeks, which was incredible. Couldn't believe it. Felt really, really surreal. Um, and we've got an eight week scan in a few days time. So hopefully a little what will it be then? Eight weeks, I think it's a kidney bean or a raspberry or something. <laughs> Hopefully then they'll have grown a little bit more, but I'll share that with you in the next pregnancy vlog. Um, yeah, all signs point to everything being okay at the moment. So week seven, it's about the size of a blueberry, <laughs> which is really cool. And there's a lot of stuff going on um, developmentally for the embryo at this point. Um, and my symptoms have kicked in. They kicked in uh, about a couple of days into week six. And my boobs are on fire and are absolutely massive. So um, none of my bras fit, which is difficult. I'm just living in bralettes because they're the only things that fit and um, the only things that don't hurt. Most, most of the time at home, I'm just going bra free. I look like an absolute state. I've actually had to leave the house today because I went to go get my hair done. <laughs> That's the only reason why my hair is washed. Do not be fooled. I have, yeah, <laughs> just been shuffling around the house looking like a complete troll. Um, but yeah, my boobs have been really, really sore and the sickness has started. I haven't been sick yet, touch wood. Um, however, I have got 24-7 severe nausea to the point where I'm really struggling to eat anything, really struggling to stay hydrated. Um, it is it's horrible. It is really, really horrible. I think I kind of expected to be sick and that would be awful because you've been sick. I don't think I expected nausea to be this bad, but there is no respite from it. It's just 24 seven from the minute I open my eyes in the morning to the minute I close them at night. I'm finding myself going to, I'm so emotional as well. 
I probably will end up crying at some point. I, I cried at a shower the other day because I had a really nice shower and I full on sobbed because I was so happy with this shower. Sore boobs, nausea, and very emotional. They are my main uh, symptoms and absolutely flipping exhausted as well. That's another one, but yeah, I didn't expect, like there's no respite from this nausea. Um, morning sickness is a complete hello. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, morning sickness is a complete lie. It doesn't just happen in the morning. Oh, your breath, I can't. That's another one severe um sense of smell like air i can smell everything including your breath you smell lovely because you had a bath so i'll just sniff behind your ear oh you smell lovely but your breath i can't bless you i would just like to say i feel like it goes without saying i am so grateful to be pregnant i'm so grateful for this pregnancy and how far we've got and everything but i feel like we need to normalize opening up a space for um pregnant people to be able to talk openly and honestly about how shit it feels sometimes because it's really hard like it's such a huge adjustment and even though you know it's coming you just you can never fully prepare yourself for it until it's here and um yeah i've been struggling so morning sickness <laughs> All day nausea is um, kicking my ass. And I think what's making me, what's, oh, like I got really down about it yesterday. <sighs> I can't, I can't stop it, it just happens. I got really down about it yesterday because I was thinking, oh my God, this could be like another four, six weeks. It could happen for the entire pregnancy. And I honestly don't know how I'd cope. Um, but I'm just really trying my best. I've got some sickness bands that I got off Etsy, which kind of help, well that one doesn't because I've not tied it properly. Um, sickness bands are helping a little bit a little bit i don't know i'm, I'm wondering about acupuncture because i know a lot of people swear by that for morning sickness because the pressure kind of helps a little bit but i've got those i've got ginger sweets i've got I, I swear if somebody else says to me ginger biscuits like another medical professional says ginger biscuits i'll cry i will just cry i've got ginger biscuits i've got ginger sweets i've got ginger tea I've got mint tea, I've got chewing gum tends to help, like minty flavours seem to be helping me a bit more than ginger. Um, I'm just snacking on breadsticks and pretzels, like salty plain things, whenever I feel like I can just like eat one or two at a time. Literally I'm eating like child's portions of stuff. Um, I've gone off my tea, oh it's a disaster. I've gone off my cup of tea, I know we're only allowed like um. 200 milligrams or whatever of caffeine which is the equivalent of a couple of cups of tea like maybe three up a push and but i can't even stomach one at the moment so i'm on zero caffeine which probably isn't helping the tiredness um but yeah i'm just i'm i'm on struggle street okay i am on struggle street so i'm just trying to where i can eat fruit um, so we had some blueberries in and some mango and i've got some peaches and some melon and stuff anything that you like fun fruit you know fruit that you look at and go oh yeah i'd like some of that got loads of that in and if i'm able to i just like have little bits of it just to keep my blood sugars up as well um yeah it's it's really tough uh but yeah they are my symptoms and i'm exhausted like all the time that's i'm surprised at how tired i am i kind of thought that i like it would be when your third trimester huge bump waddling around that's when you kind of expect pregnant people to be tired you're like oh my god you're you look really big like come and sit down and you know take some rest you don't really i don't know in my head i just didn't expect the tiredness to be that extreme uh, like like now and it is and it makes sense because there's so much growing so much developing right now your body's going through a lot so no wonder you feel like shit um but yeah i'm i'm struggling a little bit with that because i'm very independent and chris is just flipping amazing <laughs> stop crying chris is just amazing and he's just taking over and just doing all the stuff that i just don't have the energy for but i feel really feeble i think that's the word i feel feeble I feel weak and I, I feel pathetic even though i know i'm not pathetic my my body is doing like incredible things right now and i need to rest but i find that really difficult i find resting really difficult so i think i need to, uh, to adjust into that a little bit more um 
But yeah, they are my symptoms for week six and week seven. I don't like week six and seven. They're shit. <laughs> I feel I feel fa fairly positive, I think. I don't know. I feel like that is like putting nail in, in the coffin really saying that. But um, I'm excited about our next scan and our next update. So anyway, I'm going now because I will just cry my eyes out and I do feel like I need to lie down a little bit. Cross fingers, toes and eyes that everything works out. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>